knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Continuing our examination of the clade known as Lophotrochozoa, we arrive at phylum Annelida, which contains organisms that we refer to as segmented worms. Now, we've already talked a lot about different animals commonly called worms. In fact, all of the creatures in this picture are considered to be some type of worm, but they're not closely related evolutionarily. In general, we should try to avoid using the word worm as much as possible in zoology, but for the segmented worms, the term is sometimes unavoidable. That's because this phylum includes some of the most recognizable and successful worms on the planet, such as the earthworms of suborder Lumbricina, which we will cover a bit later. In addition to the familiar earthworms, this phylum also includes the carnivorous freshwater leeches, land leeches, the giant beard worms, fireworms, lugworms, Christmas tree worms, and many others. For this introduction, we will discuss general annelid characteristics, the general annelid body plan, and finish up with a look at their taxonomy. Annelids are found in marine, freshwater, and terrestrial environments. They are all segmented, or metameric, and bilaterally symmetrical, often with a distinct head region. Most of them are free-living, some are symbiotic, and a few are parasitic. All annelids are triploblastic, meaning they have three cell layers, with a well-developed coelom that is divided by septa and functions as a hydrostatic skeleton. They are all covered by a secreted moist cuticle and have a complete digestive system. They have thick layers of longitudinal muscles and a nervous system with a double ventral nerve cord and a pair of ganglia in each segment. All annelids have brains comprised of a pair of dorsal cerebral ganglia. Their sensory system is comprised of tactile organs, taste buds, photoreceptive cells, and eyes with lenses in some species. Some, especially the polychaetes, are capable of asexual reproduction by fission or fragmentation, budding, or epitoche. Larvae, when present, are trochophores. Their excretory system is comprised of a pair of nephridia for each segment, and gas exchange is accomplished using skin, gills, or parapodia. They all have a closed circulatory system with muscular blood vessels and or aortic arches similar to hearts for pumping blood. Finally, annelids are sometimes called bristle worms, because except for leeches, nearly all annelids are covered in tiny setae that are used for locomotion. Some marine forms use this to aid in swimming, while others use them to burrow and aid in anchoring within their tubes. Annelids as a phylum have worldwide distribution, and a few species are cosmopolitan. Most are benthic forms that feed on detritus, though others are found in terrestrial soils, and others, like the leeches, are active predators that feed on blood or soft tissues. In terms of the general annelid body plan, most segmented worms have a two-part head, followed by a long segmented body that ends in a pygidium, which bears the anus. The head and pygidium are not considered to be segments. During development, new segments differentiate and are added just in front of the pygidium, meaning the oldest segments are at the anterior or head region, and the youngest segments are at the end. Each segment generally contains respiratory, nervous, and excretory structures, as well as the coelom. These segments are like little compartments. They grow embryonically, covered in and separated by a membrane known as a peritoneum, which lines the body wall of each compartment and forms mesenteries that cover all organs. Peritonea of adjacent segments meet to form septa, which are punctuated by the gut and longitudinal blood vessels. Thus, each segment has its own sealed system, though they connect closely to adjacent segments. The digestive system that runs through all the segments is unsegmented, as are the nervous system and circulatory system that run the same path, from the head, through each segment, to the pygidium. A common myth surrounding annelids, and especially earthworms, is that you can cut one in half and form two new worms. While it is true that each segment contains a pair of ganglia, almost like a tiny brain, most, but not all, segmented worms cannot survive without the head region. Thus, cutting an earthworm in half kills one half and leaves the side with the head alive and severely injured. 
many annelids have breakpoints or predetermined areas along their delicate bodies that can sever if they are harmed. The anterior head region is able to escape and regenerate the posterior section, while the posterior section twitches to draw the attacker's attention. Phylum Annelida is diverse, with well over 15,000 extant species, while some counts place this closer to 22,000. Traditionally, they were separated into two classes, Polychaeta and Oligochaeta. However, more recent phylogenetic analyses have determined that Polychaeta is paraphyletic, Oligochaeta is not monophyletic, and three previously classified phyla are actually a part of Annelida. So annelid taxonomy has been in flux recently and will likely continue to be in flux in the future. In the older classification of Polychaeta and Oligochaeta, Polychaeta generally included marine worms, while Oligochaeta included mostly terrestrial and freshwater forms. Sipuncula was once classified as a separate phylum, and the deep-sea vent worms of Pogonophora were once classified as their own phylum as well. They are now classified as part of Sibuglinidae. It's worth noting that even this most recent classification is debated. With that, we complete an introduction to phylum Annelida. Let's now examine some specific members in more detail, starting with the marine worms of class Polychaeta. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.